I grew up. I grew up in the village. I come from Kirinyaga County. I grew up um, as the firstborn uh, in the family of J the late James Mutua Kiyoko. My mom is still alive. She is 86 years old. Her name is Hannah Wairimu. And those behind me, my siblings, um, are five in number. Though we were born as uh, seven of us, but uh, two have passed on. Now, when I grew up, there were so many challenges. And I believe even today everybody faces challenges. But it's unfortunate because um, when you grow up with people who don't encourage you, they press you down, they make you feel like you are useless. As a child, you are left confused. That was me when I was growing up. I grew up, many years ago, I used to grow up with uh, relatives. And um, my uh, relatives used to come and live with us. And since they were older than me, they would make me feel so foolish and so stupid and they would call me all kinds of names. So that made me uh, appear like I was a very foolish person. And so I never had any self-belief. I didn't have self-esteem. And so I despised myself. So when I grew up, I was not performing well in school. And that time, of course, you see, other than today, where parents uh, discover the strength of a child is not necessarily in books. That time, of course, one success was based in books. And I was, unfortunately, I was not doing well in class. And so even the teachers, I was ridiculing the class. So I never believed that I would ever make it in life. But I thank God for a late cousin by the name of Obed Karanja, who came home. He was in form two then. So when he came, he saw the harassment that I was going through. But he encouraged me and told me, you know what, Sarah, you can make it. You are bright. And he showed me how to do mathematics because math was a subject which I performed very, very poorly. And he showed me, he took beans, he took maize, and he took um, uh, small pieces of wood, and he would place them on the ground, and he would show me how to do it. If it is addition or if it is subtraction, he showed me how to do it. And I realized that all I needed was that encouragement. And he stayed home for a, more than two weeks, just training me and teaching me and giving me a lot of encouragement. And I believed in myself, and that was the turning point of my life. And he told me, even if people call you names, don't allow anything negative to be part of your portion. And that is who I became. So anytime someone would tell me that, Sarah, you are foolish, I would, inside my heart, because I didn't have the strength to say no, I would tell myself I'm not what this person has called me. And that continued. So in class, when I went, uh, then my dad, uh, who used to work away from home, he was working as a civil servant, he came home one time and he saw the harassment which was going on, and he decided to take me away from the primary school where I was, which was called Mutungara Primary School. And I, he took me to Embu. As I said, I come from Kirinyaga County. So he took me to, uh, uh, to Embu. I went to a school called St. Ursula Girls Boarding School. When I went to uh, that uh, primary school, I, the head teacher encouraged me a lot. And I would also like to take you back a little bit and tell you that uh, when I joined, uh, I went to that school in class five. But in class one, I was going, getting to class four, the primary school teachers were amazed because they saw my performance was very good because I jumped from second from last to number nine and they didn't believe that it was me so they thought probably I had cheated on the exam. So what they did, they gave me another uh, exam which I did very well, even better than what I had done. So that is when they believed that, you know, I could perform. So when my dad now took me to that school, I was so determined and I always remember the words of my cousin that, Betty, you can make it. It is possible. I don't allow anybody to make you to be someone who is worthless. And so I continued working hard. I performed very well. And then I went to a boys' school out of choice because I knew my parents didn't allow me to go to a boys' school. So the purpose of me going to that school was because inside me, I was feeling that I was looking at the boys and seeing the way they were performing, especially boys from the neighborhood. And I decided that I would go to a, a, a boys' school, which was a big school, and it was very rare those days. And I felt that I wanted to compete with them. And sure enough, I was performing very well in school, right from Form 1 all the way to Form 4. I would be between number 1 and number 4. Then from there, I, went, I continued. I went to Form 6, that is Kangaroo High School. I went to Form 6 in the same school, from uh, Form 5 to Form 6. And I performed so well. 
so among, I was among the, the girls who performed so well in that school and I, went, I came to the University of Nairobi and I joined to do um, law. Uh, but after one semester, I felt no, because my friends were pulling me to get to the BCom class, which I joined. And when I joined the BCom class, I passed very well as well. And uh, later on, I joined uh, the Ministry of Finance, and uh, that is where I worked. Then later on, I went to Kenya Revenue Authority. I worked for a few years, and then later on, that was in 2003, I quit because my late husband, fell sick. So when he fell sick, I had no option but to quit and uh, take care of him as I take, took care of my children and of course take care of the business. But let me tell you, I have never experienced challenges like that particular time because I was taking care of a sick man, I was taking care of the children, I was taking care of the business, but it was not easy for me to run all those at the same time. But I had to give myself encouragement. And I always remember the words of my, my um, my cousin and uh, along the way I also went to used to go and see my auntie who also encouraged my dad to take me to the boarding school and this auntie was a lady who was very rich she was doing so well and one time she took me to her home so when she took me to her home I got the motivation to work very hard she had I think there were about five cars her husband was a contractor she had five cars she had a, a stone house, of course our home was a, a mud house and um, so when I went there I said one day I'll be like Auntie Wanjiro. And so I worked wa hard and she would encourage me because of course in that time I would see a bathtub, something which was very uh, weird because for me it was like I had never seen such kind of things. So and even electricity and I was like there are people who live good lives and that gave me also extra motivation and one time I told her and her husband that even me one day i work so hard and i'll buy a mercedes benz you see those are positive ones i was confessing into my life and so every time i was working in school i would always see myself like my auntie and every time i would go to visit her on the holidays and she would also give me motivation and encouragement and told me whatever you ask for you can do it you can be and that is what i did and so when i was reading the bible one time i came across a verse which is now my best verse which is Mark 11:24, And what does it say? Whatever you ask for, believe you have received it and it will be yours. And I would keep on telling God, this is what I want, God. This is what I want. And I actually got everything I wanted, but it's because I was determined and I desired. And the Bible also says that God will fulfill the desires of your heart. So I used to read the Bible and I would get a lot of motivation from the Bible. And then I started also reading more books like Robert Kiyosaki is my mentor. I read a lot of his books and uh, even when I got employed, of course there were very many frustrations at work. I left when majority of our bosses, um, I left the university in 1985. Um, so when I joined, most of our seniors were not, had go, not gone to university. So you'd come up with an idea. There you are with the feeling that now you want to come and maybe change the country and then you give your services as much as you can. Then you'd get frustrated and they would even some of them would tell us that don't think simply because you are a graduate that you know you know so much. You can stay with your knowledge. But inside me I was feeling no, I, don't, I think this is not where I should be. But I would work with a lot of diligence and I performed very well as well. Even when I was in Kenya Revenue I performed very well. I would help so many people and uh, people, I would say people liked me because I, I have a good personality and I always feel that I want to help as many people as I can. I think it's just because my roots, I, I suffered and I don't like seeing people suffer. And that is why I said any person that I come across, I will motivate them, I will inspire them and I will help them as much as I can. And that is who Sarah Karingi is. And so when I continued like that, when I even joined my husband, it was not easy because he would be in and out of hospital, money became a problem. We were paying a loan. It was not easy to pay the loan because you see all the money was going to, to the uh, hospitals. And then at times our children would be chased away from school. And so you can imagine the ridicule. Children didn't understand, especially my son who is my second born. And he would ask me, mom, why am I being chased away from school? And then I would tell him it's because dad is sick and we, I can't afford to pay your school fees. So what I decided to do, I said, God, you have given me a mouth to talk. So why do you have to fear? 
My husband didn't want me to go and talk to the headmistress because he was telling me, how will they see me? I, before I used to provide for the family, now I can't. He had kidney failure. And he would tell me, no, don't, let, let our son just stay home. One day, God will give us money. But I refused, and I, though I didn't make him know what I did. So I went and talked to Mrs. Guinea, who is the owner of um, St. Christopher's primary and secondary schools. And I blessed that lady. She listened to me and she allowed my son to go back to school. And um, he continued learning, but it is still affected him because children would of course laugh at him because I would not afford to buy him uh, the things that of course the children take to school. But I uh, encouraged myself, but unfortunately my husband rested in 2006. So you can imagine he was a contractor and to go on with the construction work that he was doing. And so afterwards, I decided now to still also talk to people again. So I went to one of his architect friends who actually helped me. He had three houses he was building for people. And so I went, I started with the first house, which of course was just about to get completed. So it gave me motivation. Then I went to the second house, I finished. I went to the third house and let me tell you, I was so encouraged. I was so, so encouraged and I felt so good. So I felt that I could make it. So um, I always have something in my heart that Sarah, don't allow yourself to be a failure. Even if things don't work in your life, believe you can do it and it happens. So I would keep on encouraging myself. Then my business, when I took over again, when we were processing the um, timber products like the wooden frames and the wooden doors, uh, we, had, we lost very many customers when my husband died. Why? Because they didn't, I didn't have a relationship with them. That was when later on, a friend of mine introduced me to Business Network International. And when she introduced me, unfortunately in 2010, someone had just come and set my business on fire. So you can imagine how much I lost. I lost over 20 million worth of property and the stock. It was not easy to rise again from the ashes. But you know what? When you see gold, you know, you know that gold has gone through very serious process. First of all, of course, you have to dig the gold. Then after that you have to crush it and then after that you have to go through the process of going through the furnace. So I was going through the furnace and today I thank God that that happened because if this didn't happen I wouldn't be here to share my story. So how it happened was that I struggled, people discouraged me, others told me to sell the, the shell of machines but I just couldn't. And something within me would tell me, Sarah you can still make it. Wake up early in the morning, see what you can think. And so every time I would confess positive things into my life and believing, I would uh, uh, revive my business. And sure enough, that happened. So I worked hard. I would try one thing and fail. I would try another one and fail. But then I went to one of our suppliers of um, spare parts and I told him my story. That was after about two weeks uh, after the fire. And I told him, you know what, this is what has happened. And he actually helped me, told me that you have been supporting us all this time why would I not help you? And then I decided, okay, so I told him, now what I will do, I'll be taking a few spare parts for, my, for one machine, I test run it, then after that I go to the next one. Then I would do for each, each, each machinery, and I didn't care what the people or the world was saying about me because they were asking, how come that she can't roof the entire place? But you see, that is what I could have afforded, and besides, I was still paying for the loan. And this loan was not easy to clear because the bank was also running after me. But then again, as I said, people are very important. How you relate with them is very important. So there was a friend of mine who took me to one of the banks where we had taken the loan. And I was able to explain my case and he deferred my payment. And so it became very easy for me now to still continue working. So I took a whole two years to have the company now, of course, back on its feet. But I didn't care because I knew I was going to make it at the end of the day. So I focused. So focus means follow one course until successful. That I learned from Dr. Kiyosaki. And that is when I said, I don't have to overload myself with so much. That what I have to do is to work on one thing, move to the next, and another like that up to the time when my business came back on its feet. So in uh, 2012, a friend of mine invited me to Business Network International and I learned the power of business networking. Now, when I joined, of course, you take time. People will take time before they give you business. You can imagine I took a whole one year with zero business, but I continued giving a lot of business to members within that uh, organization. But what I would say helped me is my patience. I had to be patient and I had to learn. So in business, 
you have to be very patient. So even when you meet people, people first of all want to understand you. They want to know, are you this person who just wants to hit and go, you know, and run, you know? Or you do to want to hit and fly? Or are you this person who also care about other people? So I continued caring about these people. I continued listening to their needs and their wants, the kind of maybe referrals they wanted. And I never did really say it. I didn't want them to even pity me. And I, honestly, I never told anybody what I was going through. But my business was still not performing so well. So come the second year, I got very little business. Come third year, I got a slightly more because now I started now developing and having relationships with people because I understood their businesses very well. So I would refer them so much and I started performing so well in the organization to a point where I became recognized and up to today I'm still in the same organization and performing very well. I've been at the best and I have also received awards uh, uh, through the same uh, because of my performance because I've also helped people within and outside that organization. I've connected people for businesses. I have continued training people on business networking and uh, I have seen especially business startups or people who want to close their businesses. I tell them, you know what, if Sarah rose from the ashes, you too can be. You too, your businesses can also rise again. And that is why I want to tell people out here that you know what, you could be going through many challenges, but that challenge, there is one person who holds one key to your success. Someone who will tell you, take this key, open this door, and you find the treasure in there. And that is who, that person could be Sarah Karingi. And so that is why I feel that I need to mentor people. And when I started Global Networks Investment in 2016, I started this business because I really want to help many people out there. And I started training, and I'm doing quite okay. And I have even a website, you can imagine from a woman who did not know even how to, that when I joined uh, Business Network International, I keep sharing and saying, I didn't even know the power of social media. Now I know. I didn't know what leadership is. I was put into leadership, leading professional business professionals. And I was a woman who didn't even, who was very analog. So I had to learn how to use a computer. And you can imagine, I didn't even know what websites were. I didn't even know um, how to even open the computer and the, I also used to fear that the computers would infect me with viruses because <laughs> this was something which I had had someone say that computers have uh, viruses and so I got scared but when I came to learn that of course those viruses don't affect human beings I went full throttle and I've always been a person who wants to learn about innovation and most of my friends today, 90% of, of my friends today are young people because I know that is where the world is and where we are going. I'm not saying old people are bad because I'm also in that generation of the senior citizens, but more you always see me around the young people. They tap something from Sarah and also tap a lot from them. So we build each other. So I help them to learn the power of patience. I help them to learn that they need to connect with as many people as they can. That is why the Swahili say, um, Watu ni Mali. So treat people well, listen to them as much as you can, listen so well that you know what their problems are, and be the, the solution provider. And so that is what I've been training people. And on 27th of this coming month, or sorry, of this month, which is April, I'll be having another class. My other class just graduated last Friday. They are doing very well, they are young people. Some are doing air travel, air ticketing. Others are doing insurance. Others are selling uh, properties. And I can tell you, when they joined my class, they are completely different from who they are today. And that is why I will call the, anybody who is out there who maybe is going through challenges in business, reach us out. And I will train them. The training only takes five weeks, five Saturdays, from 8 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m. every Saturday from 27th, so one should count four Saturdays from 27th of April. So uh, when I talk about my journey, I feel so good because there's somebody somewhere who is learning from me. You can imagine from a woman who of course lost so much to a woman who is now an author. And these are my two books. This is a story of my life where I've shared what I've just said. And there's a lot about uh, the challenges I have faced as a widow and how I've overcome the challenges, the challenges about business the challenges about family and how I've overcome, and of course, the power of business networking. Now, this one is a book that talks about business networking, and this book will encourage many people to learn the do's and don'ts of business networking, the power of first impressions. 
Maybe when you saw me, there's something that you got about me. What is it? So, impressions are very important. We don't have to dress like Zuckerberg. We don't have to dress like um, Richard Branson. Them, they're already a brand. But you see, when you dress in rags, people may not respect you. People may not, they, they might think that you, you are not a person who is worth being given a business because we are in Africa. But I, what I mean is, people don't have to look at others and look down on them. Yesterday, I met someone who told me how he met a man who was in rags, but that man was worth 45 million Kenya shillings. So in short, this man was able to get, give him insurance because he respects people. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of a person this person is, but we have to respect people. Whether they look very rich or whether they look very poor, at the end of the day, we are human beings. Now, in my journey, um, I, I think I've told you when I joined Business Network International, I went learning and you see, networkers are supposed to learn. Networkers are learners. And you see, learning is a process and it is continuous. Networking is, is, is also a continuous process. You don't say that I'm going to network today and so tomorrow I won't network. Or I'll stop learning today because I don't have to go back to class. I am a person who has gone to classes. I joined Strathmore University in 2016 to learn. And I've learned how to become a professional entrepreneur and that's why I got one of the awards. Then in 20, then I also joined um, as a certain academy where I learned uh, how to do motivational talks. And the motivational uh, speaking, uh, the, the professional who was training us with Pepe Minambo told us that uh, we need to write books. And he's the one who encouraged us to write books because he told us you need to leave a legacy and you don't have to make the grave very rich with all the knowledge that you have. And that is when I challenged myself and I said, Sarah, you have a lot that you can share. You can share about your story. So and that is when I shared my story. After that, it was in 2016, that was when this journey of this book started. Sarah is a very social person. And uh, there are times I have, uh, I, I have my me time. So Sarah is a friend of herself. I start with myself, I love myself. And because I love myself, I also spread out my love to other people. So I have church friends, I have um, other friends who, of course, are my social friends. I also go out, I relax. There are times I go to the clubs. I uh, am also in leadership in some of those clubs, like United Kenya Club. I'm the, in charge of hospitality. And every time I go there, I say hi to people. I'm, as I have said, I'm quite social. Even when I don't know you, I will engage you and find out who you are. Then there are times I also go to golf clubs. I go and play golf. Other times I also go out to also help um, uh, the less fortunate. I have some children that I am supporting and I'm educating them. Some have gone to university and others have gone to colleges. And the, the small children, I just give them food and uh, I go to inspire and motivate them. Yes, that is Sarah when she's not at work. Always believe that you can make it in life. There is no giving up. Wake up believing that you can do it and always have God first in your life and He will answer your prayers as long as you have faith and as long as you believe in Him.